For the past week now, news of Pong Shuai's disappearance has rocked global headlines, with nearly each prominent tennis player coming out and calling for the Chinese player to be found. I'm sure many of you are familiar with this situation, but I'm still going to give you all a rundown of all that's ensued within this month so far. On November 2nd, Two-time doubles Grand Slam champion and former U.S. Open semifinalist Peng Shuai of China made a Weibo post accusing her country's former vice premier Zhang Gaoli of sexual misconduct. Peng says that in 2017, Gaoli and his wife invited her back to their house after playing tennis with one another in Beijing. The 35-year-old then says he took her to his room where he cursed her into having sexual intercourse. Peng says Zhang initially wanted to have sex with her 10 years ago when he served in Tianjin. She then stated that about 7 years ago, the two had intercourse, but after Zhang got promoted to be a member of the Polybro Standing Committee in Beijing, he essentially ghosted her. Going back to that 2017 afternoon, Zhang apparently tried to get Pong to have sex with him by telling her that he always thought about her and would treat her well. Despite being terrified and anxious, Pong thought about the feelings that she had towards him seven years ago and agreed to have intercourse. She then says that since that day, she renewed her love for him as they had quote, endless fun. Pong says Zhang constantly told her how much she loved her and that because of his position, he couldn't divorce his wife. Basically, he wanted Pong to be a side piece on the low. As time progressed, things started worsening between the two with Pong saying that he essentially toyed with her emotions. Pong says there were times where she felt like a soulless creature who didn't believe that she should have come to this world. She stated that on the day of her post, she and Zhang were supposed to talk things out, but he stood her up. This is what seems to be the trigger for this entire post, the fact that Zhang flaked in her as he did 7 years ago. Pong's Weibo post was removed within minutes, but Chinese netizens were still able to grab some screenshots before everything was taken down. Following the post, tennis as a search term was blocked on Weibo and all info about Pong was removed from the internet in China. Censorship is very prevalent in China, as websites and social media often remove content deemed objectionable to the government. China blocked CNN's broadcast signal to prevent additional reporting about Pong. While the Me Too movement is experiencing a rise in prominence within China, Pong's allegations are the first directed towards a high-ranking Chinese official, which is why the censorship is so heavy currently. So two weeks after Pong's statement, there were growing concerns about the Chinese woman's safety as she hadn't been seen publicly since. This prompted WTA CEO Steve Simon to call for Pong's allegations to be thoroughly investigated. In response to this, Chinese news media organization CGTN published an email written by Pong apparently that reads, Hello everyone, this is Pong Shuai. Regarding the recent news released on the official website of the WTA, the content has not been confirmed or verified by myself and was released without my consent. The news in that release, including the allegation of sexual assault, is not true. I'm not missing, nor am I unsafe. I've just been resting at home and everything is fine. Thank you again for caring about me. If the WTA publishes any more news about me, please verify it with me and release it with my consent. As a professional tennis player, I thank you all for your companionship and consideration. I hope to promote Chinese tennis with you all if I have the chance in the future. I hope Chinese tennis will become better and better. Once again, thank you for your consideration. Steve Simon and the WTA weren't buying this email, as they shouldn't have, responding. The statement today released by Chinese state media concerning Pong Shuai only raises my concerns as to her safety and whereabouts. I have a hard time believing that Pong Shuai actually wrote the email we received or believes what is being attributed to her. Pong Shuai displayed incredible courage in describing an allegation of sexual assault against a former top official in the Chinese government. The WTA and the rest of the world need independent and verifiable proof that she is safe. I have repeatedly tried to reach her via numerous forms of communication to no avail. Pong Shuai must be allowed to speak freely without coercion or intimidation from any source. Her allegation of sexual assault must be respected, investigated with full transparency and without censorship. Additionally, Simon took to CNN and said that he's willing to lose millions worth of business in China if Pong isn't accounted for and if her allegations aren't investigated. We have to start as a world making decisions that are based upon um, right and wrong, period. And uh, we can't compromise that. And we're definitely willing to pull our business and deal with all the complications that come with it. Um, because this is certainly, um, this is bigger than the business.
This is a pretty big deal because the WTA has made a near billion dollar investment in China, producing new tournaments within the country and hosting the Yuan Championships in Shenzhen. The COVID-19 pandemic has prevented there being any tennis action in China, but this can become indefinite if Pong's situation isn't handled with care. I doubt that this would hurt the WTA itself, as attendance for this year's championships in Guadalajara was far superior to Shenzhen and other pro tourneys in China. On Friday, Simon wrote a letter to the Chinese ambassador to the US demanding to speak to Pong live via teleconference with him and no one else present and for allegations to be investigated fairly, fully, transparently and without censorship. If that doesn't happen, the WTA will have no choice but to seriously consider whether they can play in China again. In response to the growing outrage towards Pong's disappearance, Chinese reporters affiliated with the state posted videos of her eating at a restaurant, claiming it was filmed on Saturday. Simon, while saying that he's glad to see the videos, is still skeptical of if Pong is actually free to make her own decisions. He says, I remain concerned about Pong Shuai's health and safety, and that the allegation of sexual assault is being censored and swept under the rug. Looking at these videos, I wasn't sold at all because the media could have easily lied about when they were captured. However, we received better confirmation that Pong was at least alive out of these same reporters posted a video of her at a Fila Sponsor Juniors event in Beijing. Pong smiled and signed balls for kids at the Sunday event, but reportedly said nothing. Moreover, the International Olympic Committee revealed that President Thomas Bach held a video call with Pong along with other chair members. The article, which didn't actually address the allegations nor the words of the Pong Shui movement, included pictures of Bach on Zoom with Pong. Apparently, at the beginning of the 30-minute call, Pong thanked the IOC for their concern about her well-being and said that she's safe and well in Beijing and would like her privacy respected. This was definitely a big priority for the IOC, with the 2022 Winter Olympics coming around the corner in Beijing. The public outrage will surely be detrimental to business as February is fast approaching. It's also important to note that the IOC and China have a pretty tight-knit relationship. Here's a picture of President Bach and Zhang back from 2016. The WT has yet to respond to the IOC's interview or the video of Pong at the tournament, but I'm positive that it'll be the same response of them being happy that Pong is found, but skeptical about whether she's actually free to make her own decisions. I feel the exact same way because I'm very glad that she at least appears to be unharmed, but it's evident that she's under some type of control by the government. That fake looking email the CGTN published is a strong indicator that she's not really free to act or speak on her own accord. I do believe Pong wrote that letter as she's had a history of going against the status quo for the greater good. She was one of the first Chinese tennis players who broke out of the country's system, which mandates that athletes train under state coaches and garner most of their earnings back to the state. She was one of the first to reach an agreement to allow her to train and travel by herself and keep a larger share of the earnings. As news of Pong's reemergence disperses, people have been altering the movement to free Pong Shuai, calling for the Chinese woman to be free enough to make her own decisions and at least talk openly with the WTA for example. Pong is currently ranked 189th in singles and hasn't played a match since the pandemic. It'll be interesting to see if she does return to the tour, but I feel like the Chinese state will make it hard for her to live her life as before. Credit to the WTA for how they've handled the situation because I feel like they've helped ensure that Pong is at least accounted for. I feel like if they keep applying pressure, we'll get even more insight into the allegations and get the truth from Pong herself. Until then, it's free Pong Shui.